It's your girl, Denise Joy. Welcome to another episode of Transformation for Your Home. Whether it's DIY or professional help, you can make your home a destination you'll love. Hey, good people. Welcome back to my channel and my design style video series. Quick, helpful videos with two goals in mind to help you DIY right and do it quickly. I'm your girl, Denise Joy, designer at the Furaha Method of Joyful Design. Real quick, do me a solid. Please hit the like and the subscribe button. It really helps with the algorithms. And when you get a chance, please, please share this video. I'd really appreciate it. Today, I am so excited. I am sharing tips with you to help you design your home using the Afro Boho design style. Oh. <laughs> But first up, y'all, I have got three general DIY tips, no matter what your design project is. Number one, I need you to research, absolutely research. When you're gonna start a project, I want you to read at least two articles and watch at least three videos to gain more confidence and more information before you start your project. It will really, really help you. Tip number two, ask for help. Don't take on too much. You know what? Sometimes two hands and four hands are just way better. And then number three, gather your supplies in advance. Here's what you need to do. Write a list of what you need to complete your project and then take the list with you to your favorite big box store and then you're gonna cross off each item on your list. This is a list that I use, literally, they're one of my lists with all the things crossed off on it. Cross off the items on your list so that you do not forget anything you need to complete your project. The last thing you need is to get started on your project and then you gotta keep running back and forth to the store. Talk about an energy drain, that would be it. So those are our three quick general DIY tips never forget when you're going to start a project. I've learned how to DIY and design spaces from my mom, Donna Jean, and my aunt Laura May. My mom, y'all, she could fix darn near anything. I mean, literally, she could fix almost anything. And my aunt, she was the artist in the family. Oh my gosh, she was so incredibly talented. And my mom loved to design and lay out spaces. Often, she would thrift items and incorporate them into our apartments that we lived in. She was so good at it. My aunt also loved interior design. She would refurbish vintage furniture. She would paint her walls. She would paint flowers and other art on her walls. An absolutely outstanding artist. They both showed me how DIY was the way to go long before it became the trend that it is today. Now, I am sharing tips to help you design your home using one of my absolutely favorite, favorite design styles, Afro Boho. It doesn't matter if you are a DIY and design newbie or if you're even a veteran. Learning about the nuances of design styles will always help you when it's time to execute. So let's jump in. Afro Boho is really short for Afro Bohemian. And so I want to break down the word Bohemian. The literal definition of Bohemian means a socially unconventional person, especially one who is involved in the arts, Afro stands for African and diasporic elements, and boho or be bohemian became a design style or approach in Paris in the 1900s. Now, Afro boho differs from the boho style in that Afro boho has an aspect of honoring one's heritage and culture, which you don't you don't often find that in just a pure boho. Now, both styles have an appreciation for natural elements, but Afro boho tends to use more intense and rich colors than a modern boho color palette. This wall right behind me right here, this accent wall that I painted uh, just last year, is indicative of elements of the Afro boho style. 
This is a kuba cloth, which is a, a woven fabric indigenous to Western Africa inspired accent wall that I actually freehand painted and I'll drop the link so you can see how I did this and you can maybe even create one of your own. As well, I decided to wear a little nod to the Afro boho with my uh, dashiki-like shirt today. It's really not a dashiki because it's really um, a print or more of a boutique, but it still is indicative of the color enthusiasm that you find in the Afro boho style. My main tips is don't be afraid to add everything you love and then layer and blend everything with color, texture, and pattern. Afro boho is a decor and a design style that blends that bohemian aesthetic with Afrocentric aesthetic. It shows off the playfulness and the sophistication at the same time, which is one of the reasons why I absolutely love it. Folks who are drawn to this style enjoy exploring and representing their Afrocentric heritage. They also have an appreciation for travel and other culture. Afro boho is just loads and loads of fun. And I encourage you, if you are leaning towards or considering it, jump in. Don't, don't hold back. Don't hesitate. Where are some places that you can shop to look for some Afrocentric or Afro Boho inspired kinds of pieces. Well, thrift stores are going to be a great place for you to check out. You will find a lot of eclectic types of pieces and that's another element that is also embedded into the Afro Boho style, that eclectic. Eclectic means in a general sense where you are adding pieces that don't seem like they should go together, but you're incorporating them in a way that make everything make sense. You can also check out one of my favorite stores, which is World Market. Even if you don't have a World Market near you, they have a great online uh, shopping experience. I encourage you to visit World Market, check out what they have. You're going to find some great pieces at some really decent prices. Also, check out African festivals. You may have an African festival in your hometown, or you may even travel a little bit. It will be worth it. Also, that secondhand store experience might not be a thrift store, might be a consignment store or something like that. We have a store locally here near where I live called Community Forklift. You can find lots of vintage furnishings and even sometimes contemporary and new furnishings where you're going to get a steep discount because that's that's a non-profit. I actually call Community Forklift the thrift store for DIYers and you might have something like that and in your local area take advantage of it. And last but not least, Facebook Marketplace. Oh my goodness. I have a whole video, which I'll drop the link, of how to shop on Facebook Marketplace. I have found, not only for myself, but for my design clients, some of the best pieces, whether it was Afro Boho style or some other style, Facebook Marketplace is terrific to get unique, eclectic, all kinds of items that you can incorporate into any style. But definitely check it out for pieces that would fit the Afro Boho design style. What kind of decor and other elements do you see in this design style? And where do you even use these elements? Well, I'm glad you want to know because I'm getting ready to drop it on you. There is so much you can do and so much fun you can have. Again, remember, it blends that playfulness and that sophistication and just gives you that kind of that unique vibe. I know, I know you're going to love it. Afro Boho can be styled in any room in your home. Actually, my entire home is styled using varying degrees of the Afro Boho aesthetic. And not only do I love it, every person who comes into my home falls in love with it. They say, oh, I don't want to leave. And, you know, my saying is you want a home that's always a destination that when you leave it, you can't wait to get back to it. Well, this is what Afro Boho will deliver for you. Now, as I go through the list of elements in this style, I'm also going to be showing you some photos of rooms that I've designed that show you an example and it will inspire you for your own ideas. So Afro Boho consists of that layered pattern, as I was talking about. Think of these types of patterns, pairing the even this pattern with the kuba cloth pattern on the wall behind me, they do not conflict with each other. They, they can work together. Afro Boho has bold, saturated colors, 
but you can also use a neutral color palette that can anchor an Afro boho space. And I have a dining room here that shows that quality of using a neutral as your color palette. Also mixing time periods is okay. Modern furniture or contemporary furniture mixed with more vintage pieces. You want that cozy lighting. You want to also mix of soft and hard surfaces. So for example, if you had a wood bench of some sort, you want to soften that with pillows or maybe a soft sculpture on the wall, like a juju hat or something like that. Animal prints are also big in the Afro Boho. Natural elements, lots of live plants and plant imagery in artwork and pillow accessories. Now, for those of you who are live plant challenged, you can always get fake plants. This is a pretty wonderful depiction of a cacti, but it's not real. So you can still have that plant element in your Afro Boho scheme, even if you say, Denise, there are always killing the plants. Don't let that hold you back. You can also add plant imagery in artwork on walls and even on pillow accessories. And I have an example of that in a living room that I did for a client in New Orleans. We used the plant motif on her pillows. Hey, don't forget about dry plants as well dried eucalyptus or, or dried uh, palm fronds are also wonderful that you can use to give that kind of a natural element. Wood, using wood, new or recycled wood. And if purchasing something that's real wood is out of your budget, definitely go for some of the laminated wood pieces that you can still get that wood element. You also consider some exotic wood, anything from bamboo to zebra wood. But remember, that's gonna take your budget up a little more. Repurpose items, giving something old a new use is another element in the afro boho design pattern fabric like i mentioned the kuba cloth mud cloth and a dink symbol these are all terms and fabric patterns that are indigenous to particularly the west african continent woven baskets woven rugs lots of pillows really comfort is another aspect you don't want the space to be so, like a museum, like, oh my God, there's just so much, I don't want to touch anything, or I don't want to sit on anything. Really opening the space up so that it is welcoming and folks want to just sit down and sit a while, including you, are very important to the Afro Boho style. Think of it as being relaxed, playful, and yet sophisticated. Sculptured pieces that might even be everyday objects, but they're used as art are also another element. Raffia, that's a, a, like a grass, a dried grass. African mask, mask could show um, any quality from serious to playful. Traditional African jewelry that might be displayed as art and or sculpture, again, Framed art and canvas art are another aspect of the Afro-Bohemian style, as well as carved stools. This is another big element, showing an appreciation to the artistry in one's heritage, and particularly in the African or diasporic heritage. Wood blinds are another element, another way to bring in that kind of a wood feature uh, into one's home. Upcycle pieces, using a dresser, for example, to store things or to hold dishes or something again that's sort of using something that has one purpose but using it in a new way also painting the furniture not only leaving the wood in its natural state but painting a dresser in a full pop of color would be another aspect of afro boho or a direction you could go in macrame wall hangings are all the rage now see that's a crossover between afro boho and boho there actually is quite a bit of a crossover but as you can understand as we've gone through this list that afro boho has some very distinctive elements that distinguish it from a pure boho. Also wood floors or ceramic floors are big in the Afro boho style. But listen, I had a viewer who messaged me and she said she had carpet on her floor. Don't let that hold you back. Layering area rugs on carpet and also layering rug on rug is another element of Afro boho. So if you don't have wood floor or you don't have a ceramic floor, don't let that stop you. You can get your Afro boho on still. Bonus, bonus, bonus. Make your own pillows. Here is a great thrift hack to make your own pillows. You're going to go to the thrift store. You're going to look for the section where you find ethnic type of attire. I do this all the time. You're going to look for a long sort of a cat pan or a muumuu. It could be for a man or a woman. What you're after is the square footage of the fabric. Look for a pattern that you're going to appreciate. You feel it will work well in your space. You're going to save so much money with this hat 
Plus, it's not hard to stitch a pillow, a square or even a rectangular pillow. The pillow inserts are really economical. I love to get the ones from Ikea, the feather, down feather inserts super reasonable and you're going to purchase a caftan or a mumu with all that square footage or maybe anywhere from about 10 to 15 bucks maybe even less than that at a at your thrift store if you don't feel confident what did i say earlier research look at some videos those are your diy must do's and it's just so easy to follow that and make some unique pillows to put into your afro boho space. So as you see, this list is pretty extensive. You can do so very much with creating this afro boho vibe in your space. I am so glad that you stopped by and watched this video to help you understand afro boho and perhaps have the courage now to implement this style in your home and show appreciation for your heritage or just a love of the design style. It's so fun. It's so bold. Again, that playfulness and that sophistication, you can't beat it. I hope you loved this video. And if you did, I'm sure you're going to like the video that I just added. I hope you check it out. Now, let me know in the comments, what is your favorite thrift store find or your thrift store hack? I'm so glad you stopped by and I will see you in the next video.